UFC featherweight prospect Herbert Burns. Thank you so much for joining me today. Uh, how's life right now in uh, Southern Florida? Thank you for having me. Life is going well. A lot of protests here. They oh. slow me down a little bit on the roads. A lot of police car. So we got to be home by nine. So I was driving a little faster, oh. but a lot of police on the roads. So a few protests here. That was before the coronavirus. Now the, now the protests. So yeah, we have to deal with do what we need to do. I am home safe. So tomorrow I travel. Yeah, definitely. Uh, I guess you got to stay off the roads as much as you can, right? Yes, yes. Stay as much the roads as much as I can. On the way back to this morning to the training, they had blocked the interstate, so I had to take the inside roads. And now it wasn't blocked, but it was going to start protesting. All right, well, you know, on the brighter side, you got a fight coming up, UFC 250 this week, Evan Dunham. Uh, how long have you known about this fight? Because it seems like it's very short notice. Very short notice. I didn't knew very long. Like seven, we signed the contract. The next day, you guys knew about it. it. Was right after they announced the card. I was, I I wanted the I wanted to fight the whole month. I, I'm always Ali Abdelaz is my manager. Like, hey man, I need to want to fight. I want to fight. I want to fight. I want to fight. He's like, man, okay, I'm trying. I'm trying. I'm trying. And the plan was for me to fight on the 16. Couldn't happen. And then. It was in the 23rd, and then they pushed the 23rd to the 30th, and then got Gilbert's fight. I said, hey, I still want to fight in the same event. I don't care. I care, but it would be a good chance to fight on the same card as him without being a title fight. So it would be too much pressure, you know? And then didn't happen. I'm like, oh, all right. I'm always calling Ali. Hey, Ali, I want to fight. He's like, I'm, I'm working on. And then it was supposed to fight on the 30th, but few guys didn't want to take the fight. And then it was on the six. And then I spoke for Ali. Hey, no, man, it's still working. I'm like, all right. Next day, they released the card to fill my name. I'm like, seriously? <laughs> and I called him again. And then he's like, man, okay, I'll try to do something. And then he made some magic. <laughs> and yeah. he this fight against Evan Dunn. Definitely. Well, um, you said there was a few fighters that didn't take a fight against you. You know, can you reveal that to us, or you do want to keep it a secret? Yeah, that's, I will reveal eventually, but not now. Okay. But not now. Featherweight didn't want to take the fight. Okay. I'd say I won't expose it, but yeah, a few guys refused the fight. Well, that must feel good though. You know that you're a danger. People feel like you're a danger because they're not taking the fight. If they felt like you were somebody that they could beat, they would take the fight, right? That's. It's a good way to think also, and it's good. Mm -hmm. I, I know I'm dangerous, mm -hmm. and they should know I'm dangerous because I have jujitsu, but not only jujitsu. But I understand also, like some people weren't training properly, short mm -hmm. notice, hard to make weight, and you don't know. Maybe they will fight me for full camp and not in a short notice. We'll see, we'll see. Uh, why did you decide to take this fight at uh, 150 catch weight? Oh, Evan never made 145 in his life. Mm. So, and he's a 155, and naturally, he's being light. I think his plan maybe was to come back and be a featherweight. I don't know. But I wanted to fight. I really wanted to fight. So, and the opportunity appeared. I just, yeah, let's do it. I just don't want to go to 155 because mm. I want to show my availability at 145. So, the lightest he could go was 150. So, that's where we are at the moment. When you saw his name, Evan Dunham, were you surprised that they were trying to match you up with him or did it not matter to you? You just wanted to fight. I wanted to fight. He surprised me, his name, because he was completely outside of my radar. He was retired. He was he was scheduled to come back against Michael Johnson, a training partner here, but in a 55, 155 bout. And so he wasn't a guy that was, hey, I made to fight this guy one day. And, and I watched a lot of his fights. He's in the UFC since 2009, 19 fights. So, guy's a true veteran. He he doesn't like to. He never quits. Has a true warrior spirit. Jiu-jitsu black belt, good hands. He's a. He'll be a great test for me. 
Yeah, yeah, definitely a, a long time veteran. Lots of tape you can watch on him. It's not like a fighter where you can't find nothing. It's everywhere. Yeah. Uh, what interests you most about his style of fighting? He, what I think his best brute kiss, he doesn't give up. And he has a good gas tank. He has a good gas tank and he keep pushing, he keep pushing, he keep pushing. He doesn't have a lot of knockout power or like submission. He's a good black belt, but he doesn't finish a lot of fights by submission. I'm sure he has submission skills, but it's hard to do that in a in the highest level. But I think it's a good matchup for my style of fighting. He likes to be in the inside fight, like mid-range, short-range distance, and throwing a lot of punches and mixing his boxing, his wrestling, and, and jiu-jitsu. And I like to be in the long distance, throwing straight and hard kicks, throwing my knees, and... I like to do jiu-jitsu also, so let's see who imposes his will. I, I believe it will be me. Uh, the only interesting thing that he's a southpaw, like thing that I wasn't. I, one of the guys that almost took the fight was a southpaw, so I started training a little bit more for southpaw. So when he came, I'm like, oh, at least I train a little bit to a southpaw. It seems like the last few fights, right, you've been opening up more with your striking and, and showing more of your arsenal. You know, the your last fight, of course, the knee was devastating. Um, this fight against Dunham, he he likes to stand and trade. Even though he mixes the wrestling in, um, he's not really going there to submit guys on the ground. Do you feel like this fight, you could show more of your striking arsenal? You you feel like you could show more of your power? Yeah, I think I, think I can do a little bit more. Striking, my goal is to take down and finish. I'm a jiu-jitsu guy. I like to finish fights. I don't like to, to just go by decision. I like I like to finish. And if I can finish, if I could choose one way, it would be always finish by submission. But I would I would take what is there. I'm sure he's super tough, but I believe in my skills. My strike has improved a lot. I show a little glimpse of it, but has way more here to show, and I don't show all my skills in one fight. If I have the opportunity to show the skill on the striking, I would do that, definitely. Your your dangerous ground game, of course, you said your game plan is to go to the ground, choke them out, take their arm, whatever you need to do. But I feel like that allows you to become a better striker in the fight, because they're worried about that so much, where you could throw your hands hard and, and not really worried about the ground too much, even going on your back. Yeah, I, it's, it makes me more comfortable because if I get taken down, I can work from my back. I'm very aggressive from my back. I pulled submissions before, home fights before that. So I have a very versatile jiu-jitsu game. A few guys are good in jiu-jitsu, but they're good at the top. And they when they put them on their back, they had problems. I'm not one of those guys. I can create lots of problems from people from my back. So... I'm not worried about that, so I can be more relaxed. And in the last few fights, I've been improving my like my confidence on the striking during the fights. Because in the training, I already do strike a lot, but on the fights, I'm, I I don't need to, I don't take unnecessary risks. You know, you were on lockdown because of the coronavirus. Did you continue training? We kept training because UFC was in talk to come back on the nine, and. Gilbert may was a possibility of him fighting. It was a possibility of me fighting. And then when they released the card, we already knew before, three of our teammates were fighting at the nine. Vicente, Michael Johnson, and Omar Morales. So we need have to go back to train to help those guys. But why we don't have anything? We didn't have anything. Gilbert has a, gar Gilbert has a garage gym. Mm -hmm. So I went to the gym and and training for him at his house. I still doing my little striking, conditioning. I didn't stop completely. And then when these events start going back, we are, we are already training. So I didn't really stop training. Yeah, when I talked to Vicente, uh, I think last month, he was telling me that he was, remember he was in uh, Florida and they canceled the show and he went back to Brazil and then he came back to Florida. So you were training with him the whole time then. Yeah, it was funny because we were supposed to, the the fights were, we were supposed to travel, it was Thursday. Fights were Saturday, mm -hmm. it was Florida, so everyone was supposed to travel like really close to the fight. And anyway, I don't remember the exactly the day, but we went to spa, 
and then I got to the gym a little late, and then Gilbert was watching this point. He's like, hey, they just canceled the event. I'm like, you're joking, right? You guys are supposed to travel tomorrow. He's like, nah, they just canceled. Me and Harry. I said, hey, it's crazy, eh? They canceled. I'm like, yeah. Don't say anything yet. Let's spa. And after the spa, I tell the guys. <laughs> they spa, I already knew. So if you're in the sparring, they call, hey guys, oh, look, the event's canceled. Like, what? What? <laughs> and it, if you guys can watch this, this tape is on C Media YouTube. Mm-hmm. So you guys can watch that. That is the, the whole thing of happening, how it happened. It was a funny thing. Mm-hmm. But yeah. Unfortunate, we need to adapt. We can change the situation. We, the virus is something serious, and mm-hmm. we need to take the precautions. I think life should not like slowly go back to normal, but yeah, it was cancer and it was it was hard on the thing. I feel like no one's worried about the coronavirus anymore because of the the riots and the looting and everything that's going on. Yeah, now social distance is off. People will go back and to break things. They shouldn't break things. Just you can protest peacefully. I think the riots, like, if it, you need to be, if it is a problem, have a solution. And you need to be proactive about any kind of problem. But the riot, it is the solution. If you do a riot today and come on the street and break something, we'll fix the problem. I don't think, I think it will make it worse. <laughs> so I think people need to, back to themselves and thinking, I don't know, analyze the actions. I, mean, I don't think I I don't think most people are racist. Very few people are racist. Very at least I don't know. I know a lot of people and none of those are racist. <laughs> I'm a mixed race. I've been Asian a long time. And I've been discriminated before because I'm not Chinese. <laughs> And oh, in Europe before, in Sweden, because I'm not white. But I I don't take this as, and this doesn't make me hate those people. They, I just feel that they're ignorant, that they, they, they don't know what they are. You always should know new people and interact with a new race and have a knowledge and share your knowledge and receive some knowledge. When you new, meet new people, that what happens. You have new experiences in life, but some people prefer to, to not to do that and just close themselves and judge the other person just because they, they skin color. That's not, not, not the right thing to do. That, you explained it perfectly about a lot of the people that's outside breaking things and you know vandalizing things is that's that's their mindset they're closed-minded they don't know what they're doing they're just doing it because some other people are doing they're just following everybody thank you herbert so much for the time and uh good luck and be safe man out there in the streets and uh we'll see you this weekend on a uh, pay-per-view yeah definitely i'll be doing my best i've done he's a great guy he's a great fighter he's like i said super Super tough veteran. I'm looking forward to this fight. All my focus on Dunham. Like I'm not looking past him. There's nothing that. There's no. All my focus is there. And go there and do a great performance and get this victory. And we see you after that.